earphones in my ears, cameras in my face, and I guess we got to do this interview. Music is like the fountain of youth. It's also a time machine. So when you hear a song, it takes you back to the moment you heard it, where you were in your life. was just supposed to be a side band. We never knew Body Count was gonna blow up. It was just something to do on the weekends around LA to have fun. Beatmaster V went to high school with me. Beatmaster V was a drummer slash weed dealer. He got kicked out of Crenshaw for selling weed. I mean, he had a book with the pages cut out and a whole bunch of joints in it and the security guards chased him across the quad and he threw it up in the air and it was joints for everybody and they, <laughs> and they threw his ass out of all LA city schools. So Vic was my man. Moose Man was selling weed. B-Rock was kind of like Ernie's student. Ernie grew up in a neighborhood that I didn't really fuck with. He grew up in a Van Ness neighborhood, which were Bloods, and most of my friends were Crips. So that was a problem right out the gate. But he was friends with another guy that I was in an actual dancing group with, you know? I used to break dance back in high school, and L.A. was like into pop locking. Not to mention you had the gangbangers Crip walking. So we had our own West Coast dances. We had a crew, and we would dance against other schools and other cliques. So one of my friends was connected to him, and then I learned about Ernie playing the guitar at Crenshaw. He would do Peter Frampton, and he made his own flash pots. And so now you got a guy playing rock in front of like 150 gangbangers. It was very interesting. But I knew that this guy was super talented. Then as I became Ice-T from rapping, he and Beatmaster V used to want to play on my rap records. And I was like, well, hip hop is kind of done with samples and it was difficult. Even though Beatmaster V played on Ryan Pays on my first album, there's live drums on the song, but it was complicated to get them involved. I had been going to Europe and I would notice that the kids would mosh to fast rap. Like when Public Enemy would play Bring the Noise, it'd be a mosh pit. So I was like, you know what? We should make a rock band. So I came back and I got them together and I said, look, we got an idea for a band. We're gonna base it off of Black Sabbath, Slayer. We're gonna base it off of Suicidal. Suicidal. Vic had never played a double kick. I had to get him one. He had to teach himself how to play. And then we just start cranking out records, which became our first album. What you listening to right now? is a new Body Count album. It'll be in the stores March 31st. It'll be banned March 32nd. You gotta get it quick. Fuck you! Fuck you! You know what to do if a kid got killed on the way to school or a cop shot your kid in the backyard. Shit would hit the fan, motherfucker, and it would hit real hard. We used to have a ghetto blaster, like a, a regular tape recorder where we rehearse. I kind of hum riffs and they can play it. And then I go, okay, now we need a fast part. And they'll play it and I'll say, okay, stick that to that. And then we'll do that all day until we kind of make a song. And then we play it back and I'm like, that shit sucks. Or I'd be like, that shit sounds like somebody else's shit. Like, we just fucking plagiarized the fuck out of somebody, you know? Because we, <laughs> we're trying to come out of thin air with this music. And then every once in a while we get something that kicked ass, we're like, yo. That's There Goes the Neighborhood right there. You're not gonna always touch the pulse of America, but I touched like the electric fence. You know, I hit it, bow.
I heard about a rapper named Ice-T, whose cop killer's CD was about murdering police officers. Police across the country were outraged, rightfully so, and the media were sort of tiptoeing around the thing because the rapper was black. I got my 12-gauge sawed off. I got my headlights turned off. I'm about to bust some shots off. I'm about to dust some cops off. Die, die, pig, die. Police, I know your family's grieving. Catch you a little number, isn't it? Tonight we get even. I still carry that cop killer luggage. And I had, you know, the whole United States government, the president, everybody on my bumper. I didn't do it intentionally. I didn't know it was going to have that blowback, but they're putting it out there. You know, Ice-T just wants to kill innocent police and this, that. And they, you know, they twisted and spun it when it wasn't even about that. You know, Ice-T wants to kill cops, which is not the truth, never was. I don't hate cops. I, I don't like bullies. I don't like racists. You know, I don't like people that abuse their power, whether or not they have a badge. I don't like that type of personality. So if they happen to be cops, well, fuck them. I don't like them. Just because you got a badge doesn't absolve you from being an asshole. I don't have nothing against all police. I feel that if the cops were a total, legit organization, non-corrupt, I probably would be a cop. I've been playing a fucking cop for 20 years. I've explained my position on police over and over again. Where American people are really up, up in arms about this song, which doesn't kill, it's just a song, but the cops are in, in America actually kill kids, and the parents cry and scream, and these cops don't go to jail. They're just laid off. See, my attitude is that just by, because you have a badge doesn't give you the right to murder me. Once a cop pulls me out of the car and handles me under the law, that's cool. But once he starts beating on me and taking advantage of me, no longer is he in the, in the lines of law. He is now becoming some inhuman person, and he's determined now it's just two men out in the street, and one of us got to die, and it's not going to be me, you know? It's either you or me. That's what the record says. It hurt right when the shit was popping off. Yeah, I kind of got blackballed for a while. But now, in 2020, all the people that grew up off body count are now in charge. So when I go into a business or an office to talk to a CEO, it's like some 30, 40 year old guy says, man, I grew up on you, man. I fuck with you. I love you. And they're not scared. It's been a changing of the guard, so to speak. They're learning, they're listening, they're hearing what the brothers are saying. It's the only voice we got to send out this power. All we want is to be equal. All we want is fair treatment. Ain't nothing wrong with that. They've made a big issue about this one song, okay? So really what I'm saying is, songs off the record, shut up. The first album, a lot of people say was the best. I mean, when you look at the records, Cop Killer, Mama's Gotta Die, Voodoo, On With The Body Count, Bows of The Devil, KKK, Bitch. We got wild in the backstage bathroom. Suck my dick like a motherfucking vacuum. Said I love you, but my daddy don't play. He's the fucking grand wizard of the KKK. <laughs> That record was ripping. We didn't know how good it was till later. <laughs> till we tried to do it again. <laughs> a band and you've been around you know 20 years you will have ups and downs body count has gone through a lot of shit people say why you guys haven't made no albums and why we haven't been in the mix because we've been through a lot of shit we had just done one third album and everything was good and moose went home to visit his friends in the neighborhood he grew up in and some guys pulled up and decided to start shooting. Everybody ran down the driveway and Moose was the only one hit. Got shot in the back, dead. Wasn't gang banging, wasn't just visiting his friends, you know, keeping it real, so to speak. And 
You know, when we make these records and people are like, oh, you guys are glamorizing this shit. I'm like, no, nah, we're telling you how the fuck it is. One of our band members died from that. Can I get some love for Moose Man? <laughs> Beatmaster V was like my closest friend out of the three. He was diagnosed with leukemia. Within a year, he was gone. We untimely lost our drummer named Beatmaster V. Give some love to Beatmaster V. I remember we were in Belgium and we had a big sold out concert and I went backstage and the doctor checked his blood count out and the doctor basically told us that he was technically dead. And I canceled a concert with a packed arena. We took a lot of shit for that because we didn't tell anybody he had cancer. We just said he was sick and we got sued, but I didn't want him to die. Like, I'm not gonna do a show and have one of my best friends die. So I knew it was a lot more grave than the audience did. Within about eight months of that, he did die. And it was rough to see somebody so healthy one minute and gone the next. And then D-Rock, he had lymphoma. He had been sick the entire time we were in the band every year. And then I guess it just, caught up with him finally, and he died. Can I get some love for D-Rock? And every time one of the band members died, the band just stopped. It's just out of mourning, like, yo, what do we do? We dedicate this show to D-Rock, my nigga, you know, the executioner. Cause I was ready to stop. Motherfuckers like, nigga, you can't stop. It's, it's really hard, but you have to do it in honor of them. We love y'all. We out of here. Aloha. Peace. Yeah! Yeah! We took some hard blows, you know, over the 20, 25 year period of this band to be in this position right now. You know, Vince worked in our rehearsal hall and he was on deck and then Vince found Will and then our final new member, Juan. Juan had been playing in other bands, Agent Steel. He was connected to Sumerian Records when we got the deal over there. We've been solid ever since. We're back. Vince knows he's not Moose Man. Will knows he's not Beatmaster V. Juan knows he's not D-Rock. And when I introduced the band, I introduced them, and then I introduced Ernie as the only original member. What you're looking at is a band that once was five cats that went to high school together. Me and Ernie are the only two living members of the original body count. And we still here, y'all. You know why? Because y'all won't let us stop. They ain't ready for us to stop. The fans love it, and I think the fans want the band to continue, and this is just life, you know? Life has to go on. So we we'll just keep on going. Break hell! Break hell! Break hell!